Welcome to the deep dive. Ready to dive into another real estate mystery. Always. This time, uh... You've got a puzzle hidden in, you guessed it. Emails. Emails. Oh, I love a good email chain. This one, well, it hints at a possible misunderstanding uh -oh. between a homeowner and historic home tax credit. Hmm. This can be tricky. Yeah. So think of it kind of like those property shows, you know? Oh, yeah. But with way more email and a lot less demolition. Ah, I can handle that. So what's really fascinating here is that these emails, yeah. they unfold over a few weeks in the summer of 2019. Okay. And we've got a pretty interesting cast of characters. We've got a homeowner, someone from a community organization, a state official, yeah. even a state delegate jumps in at one point. So this isn't just a simple, like, reply all gone wrong. No, no. This is this is a process, right? Lots of layers, lots of points where things could get, well, confusing. Definitely. Okay, so let's break this down. What exactly is the homeowner concerned about in these emails? Well, the homeowner seems to be questioning whether the community organization involved had the legal right to require the return of funds. Okay. Connected to a Maryland Historical Trust tax credit. So for those of us who don't spend every weekend, you know, browsing real estate listings for these historic fixer-uppers, can you explain exactly what this Maryland Historical Trust tax credit is. Absolutely. So the Maryland Historical Trust Tax Credit, or as it's often called, MHT Tax Credit. Okay. It's a program designed to to really encourage homeowners to invest in restoring and preserving these these historic properties. Wow. Right? So it's a way to incentivize people to kind of keep that unique historical character yeah. of our communities. Imagine you buy this beautiful old house, but it needs a lot of love. Lots of love. This tax credit helps offset those costs, which can often be significant, to bring those gems back to life. Oh, so it makes sense that a homeowner would be pretty concerned if there was a misunderstanding about well, how those funds are being absolutely. Out. Because in these emails, the homeowner seems to feel like he was misled about the process. In what way? Well, he mentions a discounted purchase price, but then being asked to return the tax credit funds. Mm, to whom? Back to the community organization. Okay. And even weirder, he sent a personal check. A personal check. A personal check to someone at the organization. That does raise some eyebrows. Yeah, a little bit. It definitely leads to questions about how are these funds typically handled. Right. Was everything truly above board in this case? Right, because remember, this tax credit is calculated based on the qualified rehabilitation expenses. And it's usually given out after the work is completed and approved. Right. So this whole personal check detail really adds another layer. Yeah. To the intrigue. Yeah, yeah, to the intrigue. So we're piecing together this financial puzzle. Mm -hmm. And then to make things even more complicated, oh. there's a communication breakdown no. happening at the same time. Oh, so now it's a communication puzzle. It is. The homeowner emails the director of the Maryland Historical Trust. Okay. But she's on vacation. Oh. And she couldn't find his original message. I can't imagine having that happen with important emails especially when it's about finances. It really makes you think, right, about how much we rely on email. Yes. And how easy it is for things to get lost, especially when people are out of the office. Right, and don't forget, this was all happening during a time when Baltimore was dealing with some serious cybersecurity issues. It's no wonder the homeowner was worried about his email just disappearing. Yeah, I'd be concerned too. But he doesn't just sit around and wait. He's proactive. Good for him. He follows up. He's worried that his email just vanished into the digital void. Makes sense. But then, things take another interesting turn. Another turn. I'm on the edge of my seat. Someone who has copied on the emails forwards them to a state delegate. What? A state delegate? A state delegate. Now, why do you think they felt the need to involve a delegate in all of this? Was this a last-ditch effort to get some answers? Or is it is it more common than we think to seek help from delegates when dealing with these programs? Well, it's a great question. I mean, it really makes you wonder if the person who contacted the delegate, if they felt like the homeowner wasn't getting the help they needed through the usual channels, was it a sign of just frustration with the process or was it more strategic? Like, were they trying to speed things up by involving someone with a little more influence? It really makes you think, doesn't it, about how easy it is to get lost in the maze of these programs. Yeah, and whether there's enough in place to make sure everything's fair and transparent. Exactly. I mean, this situation is a good reminder that even with programs designed to help homeowners and communities, things can still get pretty messy. Oh, absolutely. It really highlights how important clear communication is right from the beginning, mm. making sure everyone understands the terms and conditions. 
Yeah. Informed consent is so crucial here. I mean, homeowners need to know what they're getting into before they sign anything. Right. Imagine thinking you're getting this benefit and then later you find out there are all these strings attached. Or that you might have to return the money you thought was yours. Exactly. That would be so frustrating. It also makes you think about the power dynamics. Oh, yeah, for sure. You've got a homeowner who might not know all the ins and outs of these tax credits. Right. And then you have this community organization. They probably have a lot more experience with all this. Yeah, that's a good point. It's so important for homeowners to feel comfortable asking questions and getting clarification. Absolutely. Even legal advice if they need it. Because it's not just about understanding the rules. Right. It's about feeling em empowered to advocate for yourself. Yes, and making sure your interests are protected. So we've got this homeowner, might feel misled. We've got the community organization, their actions are being questioned. Mm -hmm. We've got a state official who's totally out of the loop. Out of office, out of the loop. And a delegate's been brought in to try to sort it all out. It's like a, it's like a real estate drama unfolding. I know, right. But these emails... They only give us one side of the story. Yeah, true. What else do you think we would need to know to really get the full picture of what happened here? Well, we need more context, right? What were the actual terms of the agreement between the homeowner and the organization? Was there anything in writing about the conditions for getting the tax credit and maybe having to return the money? Were there any promises made that weren't actually in the documents? So it's kind of like those true crime podcasts. Oh, I love those. They go through every single detail trying to figure out what the evidence is really telling them. Right. Got to look for those clues. In this case, the emails, that's just one piece of the puzzle. Yeah, just a starting point. We need to see the whole agreement, understand the community organization's policies, maybe even hear from other homeowners who went through the same thing. Yeah, exactly. That brings us to the big question. Which is? Was this just a one-time thing, a weird situation that caused all this confusion? Mm -hmm. Or is there a bigger problem here? Maybe a pattern of behavior that raises some red flags about how transparent and accountable this program really is. Mm. Or even all community development programs. Oh, now those are the tough questions. Right. It makes you think about whether anyone's actually tracking how this tax credit money is used. Mm. Is there any oversight to make sure homeowners are treated fairly? Yeah, good point. And then there's the role of these community organizations. Right. Are yeah. they there to help homeowners navigate this complex process? Yeah. Or are they maybe sometimes overstepping their boundaries, maybe exerting too much influence? It's a tough balance, for sure. It seems like with these emails, there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. Oh, definitely. We've got these questions about communication and informed consent mm -hmm. and the role of these community organizations yeah. and even how these programs are managed. That's a lot to think about. It really is. Yeah. So what are some of the key takeaways you think our listeners can learn from this whole deep dive into what started as just a simple chain of emails? Well, I think first and foremost, yeah. knowledge is power, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Especially when it comes to your home and your finances. Yeah. Do your research. You know, don't be afraid to really dig into the details of any program you're thinking about. Yeah. Understand all the terms and conditions, the potential risks. Right. If something seems unclear or just too good to be true. Yeah. It's always worth getting a second opinion. Or even talking to a lawyer. Exactly. Don't just assume everything will work out the way you expect. Read the fine print. Always read the fine print. So that's a great first takeaway. What's number two? Number two is don't be afraid to ask questions. Oh, yeah. Especially when you're working with an organization or a government agency. Mm -hmm. Make sure you understand what their role is and how they do things. Right. You have a right to know. Exactly. You have the right to be informed and make the best decisions for you. It's easy to get overwhelmed when dealing with these programs. Oh, yeah, totally. But being assertive and advocating for yourself, that's so crucial. Couldn't agree more. And finally, I'd say even with programs that have the best intentions, things can still get complicated. Yeah. So stay vigilant, stay informed, and never be afraid to ask for help if you need it. This deep dive has really opened up our eyes to just how complicated these historic preservation programs can be. Me too. It's not just about fixing up old buildings. It's about navigating all these regulations and incentives mm -hmm. and these relationships with different organizations. It's a whole ecosystem. It really is. Yeah. And it's a reminder that we all need to be on the same page. Absolutely. We need clear communication and informed consent. Mm -hmm. And everyone needs to do their due diligence to make sure these programs are actually benefiting homeowners and the communities they're trying to help. 
Blackwell said. It makes you wonder how many other stories like this are out there just hidden in people's inboxes. Oh, I bet there are tons. Waiting to be uncovered. Who knows what other mysteries we'll dive into next time. But until then, keep exploring and keep questioning and keep diving deep. See you next time.